Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the 2023 Cadillac Escalade. The best Escalade Cadillac has ever made. And this vehicle has come a long way since being a rebadged GMC back in the 2000s. This thing is really nice. And in this video, I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of this, talk about what sets it apart from some of its competitors. Stay tuned. gearhead so I bet as you can tell from the front of this Escalade it has decided to rain on us today for filming day no bother because I have found a parking garage to film in starting up front under the hood first and foremost this has the exact same 6.2 liter that was in the Chevy Silverado ZR2 I tested when I was in LA earlier this year. So it makes 420 horsepower, 460 pound-feet of torque, made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission. And in this vehicle, it is connected to a four-wheel drive. So it does power all four wheels, but you can get two-wheel drive Escalades as well. I much prefer this being a four-wheel drive version. Closing the hood and stepping back to truly appreciate the design of this. I have gotten so many compliments on this vehicle since it showed up, especially this uh, premium red paint job on this. This is a $1,200 red paint job that was uh, selected when this Cadillac was optioned. But I am absolutely in love with the styling of this Escalade. I mentioned in the intro, this started as a rebadged GMC Yukon Denali. And really that's all it was, was Cadillac badges plopped in place of the GMC versions. Not so here in 2023. This is its own unique design. It gets its own hood, fenders, everything, and really stands out and is unique in its own right. For the latest generation though, Cadillac decided to go with horizontal, whoo, horizontal headlights here instead of vertical ones because to go vertical, they went with these massive LED running lights and turning signals really makes a statement when you're going down the road here in this new Escalade. And then yes, of course, the big, bold, brash, maybe grill up front. This is a premium luxury version, so it's kind of a chromed out grill. If you go with any of the sport trims, you get a blacked out grill, especially if you get the new high performance Cadillac Escalade V and hopefully we'll get our hands on one of those very soon with a performance V8 under the hood. But I really do appreciate the style of this one. I myself might go with one of the sport models uh, just for the blacked out appearance. And that's where I really wanna get into Escalade and how you shop for these because it is such a luxury vehicle. You can really customize it and get one that is really just for you the way you like it. This is again, the premium luxury trim, which is just a step above base, but it has got a lot of options on it. So uh, this one actually stickers at just under $108,000. After spending some time on Cadillac's website, I built my sport trim model, and I think it was a premium sport trim, uh, just how I would like it for 115. So not that much more money, and you get a lot more features on the inside. But let's take a quick tour of the outside of this one. All Escalades now get 22 inch wheels. So really leaning into what has made this vehicle so popular over the years, used to, uh, you would see aftermarket wheels going north of 20 inches. Now, here we have a factory 22 inch wheel on the Escalade as the only wheel size that you can get. So just showing you how far this has come since the early 2000s, factory 22 inch wheels. I already mentioned the paint color on this one, but this one actually has a proximity key that when you get far enough away from it will lock and fold the mirrors in place. But if you unlock it, you can see that this one has got perimeter lighting and if I open the door here, has got power deployable running boards 
and that is an additional extra on this model here that we have in front of us but i really like the styling and the proportions this is the shorter wheelbase so think tahoe yukon not uh, suburban yukon xl which cadillac does make a long version in the escalade esv not to be confused with the escalade v which they also make in the esv version doesn't matter for this generation cadillac actually lengthened the wheelbase and put an independent rear suspension back in the back to improve that third row comfort and we will get to that in just a bit but very clean styling here on the side again because i'm in a premium luxury i get this chrome design here on the side another cadillac badge here on the side to go with the cadillac badge here that actually serves as the lock function on uh, this vehicle when you walk away from it as well very nice very large proportions here on the side and then moving around to the back Cadillac has been known for these very tall uh, tail lights in the past but on the previous generation Escalade Cadillac took it a step further taking them all the way from uh, the roof line down to that rear bumper so you get these massive light blades back here in the back on the Cadillac Escalade. These have proven to be so popular that there are actually aftermarket kits now that allow you to put that on your Tahoe or on your Yukon, uh, just to say that, you know, you're driving something like a Cadillac Escalade. And these do a really cool light up animation. They fill up from the bottom a couple times as you approach the vehicle late at night back in the back rather uh, tame styling outside of those large taillights you get a nice chrome strip with this a very large cadillac logo which actually serves as a release for the rear hatch back here so you can open the rear hatch that way and close it with the button right there but otherwise very simple styling back here nothing too overboard you have built in exhaust down here that aren't actually tied to the exhaust system. There's a little bit of a gap between this chrome exterior and the tailpipe back inside there. But for the most part, it does a good job of keeping the look. And the whole point is to keep those shiny anyway. A lot of people have wondered what this number is on the back of Cadillacs lately. This is the torque of this particular model rounded up in newton meters so again 460 pound feet of torque translates somewhere around 600 newton meters of torque here in this version you can also get a three liter turbo diesel again with that same 460 pound feet of torque so every escalade is going to have a 600 badge back there an interesting thing for me though is i understand they wanted something to put back here they can't do displacement because the brand has claimed to go all electric by 2030 so can't do displacement so uh, the next best thing electric vehicles are known for their torque so use a torque number but i don't understand why they didn't use pound feet which more people are familiar with but it is what it is back here underneath you do have a release for the back window. So if you just need to throw some stuff back here in the back, but you don't need to lift the whole lift gate, there is that button right there to release. Easy to see the top mounted rear wiper when the uh, window is open and you can see that stays in place and oh, there it is underneath that rear spoiler uh, when you close that back window down. The other way in which you can get into the back is there is a kick to open feature and you can see there is a Cadillac logo uh, displayed underneath here, letting you know exactly where to kick to open this. Now, the regular Escalade has just over 20 cubic feet of storage space behind the third row of seats with the seats up like this. This does have power folding third row seats, so you can fold it down for over 70 cubic feet with both of these folded flat and then you can actually fold the second row seats forward from back here. And of course, there we go. 
and they fold flat. And I know it's incredibly dark in this parking garage today, but with all seats folded flat, you get over a hundred cubic feet, over 120 cubic feet of storage space all the way up to those front seats. So very impressive, the amount of space in this large SUV. And then the third row, at least, can be folded back up. You have to manually fold those second row seats up. But uh, let's kick the rear uh, bumper one more time, uh, close that rear hatch, and take a look on the inside and see just how nice the inside of this Cadillac Escalade is. One more note before we get in, I did want to call out just on the back side of the gauge cluster, which I'll show you here in a second when we get inside, is a lit Cadillac logo. Just letting everyone know around you exactly what you've got. You're driving a Cadillac. So again, hopping into it, you open the door. It is actually a pressure pad on the back of the door handles. That door handle is fixed in place. I'm gonna turn the vehicle off. I had it in accessory mode. So I'll go ahead and turn that off, turn our blinkers off. And it's gonna beep at me for a little bit just because I've got my phone in the charger and the headlights on. So, oh my goodness, it's, it's just gonna keep beeping. So there we go. Headlights are off, it's done beeping. I will call out, uh, you can see the ambient lighting. So that is one perk to being in this uh, parking garage is I can show you the ambient lighting. This actually does have soft closed doors. So all you have to do is pull them to and the Cadillac will do the rest. And then those running boards go back into place. But you can see the ambient lighting is currently cycling through all the different colors. Really nice look, but let's put our foot on the brake, push button start and we will see this giant 38 inches of OLED screen come to life here. And that is the number that Cadillac brings to mind or calls to attention more often than not is 38 inches of OLED from uh, left to right up here. But it is actually three individual screens. It's something like seven inch, uh, 12 inch and 16 inch, somewhere in that ballpark. So over here, you've got your trip computer that you can actually touch and interact with. It does swipe through your two different trip uh, scenes and then goes to a blank panel if you don't want anything there. So you can see I've put nearly 200 miles on it, 13.9 MPG. I have left it idling more than I probably would if I were in my own vehicle, but you can see what we're getting there. So if you want to control your gauge screen right here, you go right here, so you've got the options of your gauges. You can do a full map, which changes everything and uses a Google map. You can do an AR camera, which comes in handy when you are using the built-in navigation in this, because it'll actually display where you need to turn here on the screen. And then night vision. I have really come to appreciate this night vision. This is not the first implementation of night vision in a Cadillac product. They actually debuted it in the DTS sedan a long time ago, and it kind of flopped back then, but it is starting to catch on with other automakers. So they brought it back here. The thing I really like about this night vision is it highlights people uh, very brightly yellow. So it catches your attention even if you aren't staring down at this display, which you can see it is not a widescreen display. It is more of a standard uh, aspect ratio. So you don't get a full screen view of what's in front of you, but it does help you see people. Honestly, I can say this for a fact, you see people first uh, highlighted in yellow here before you can actually see them in reality. It does a very good job. I'm gonna put it back here on this gauge cluster because over here you get your time and temp. Over here you get your audio information. Interestingly enough, this album art is not pulled from, I'm currently hooked up to Apple uh, CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay. It doesn't use the information from CarPlay. It pulls its own album art information from uh, the source 
and through its sources. So this doesn't always match what is actually on CarPlay. Very interesting note to me. This is something that just drives me insane. So you would think with 60 miles an hour at top dead center, this would be 120 mile an hour speedometer, but it's actually 160. You can see here at 80, instead of going at 10 increments, they switched to going to 20. So 80, 100, 120, 140, 160. If they had kept it up, 90, 100, 110, 120. So I have not gotten it over 80 miles an hour because, you know, that's the highest speed limit here in Texas or there in Mounts. And so I don't know what happens if the needle just starts moving faster or what, but just an interesting note there. Moving here to the door panel, this has heated and ventilated seats. They do remember that they were left on the last time they were on. They also work in conjunction with remote start. So I really like that. General Motors does a really good thing of giving you heated backrest and cushion or just backrest. So maybe if you want a little bit of relief for your back, you can turn that on, but you don't necessarily want your booty getting too warm. And then door locks and then your mirror controls. You can actually fold the mirrors in from right here, which I have to do to park in my garage. Uh, and then you get automatic up down front windows, automatic down back windows, and two person memory seat here. Moving up to the front, you get your transfer case, your electronic transfer case, downhill descent control, your drive modes, which you can see we have tour, sport, off-road, tow haul, and my mode. And that actually changes uh, everything from your ride height to throttle mapping to transmission shift points and things of that nature. This does have an adjustable height suspension, so you can raise it to increase ground clearance, your normal ground clearance, or your entry exit ground clearance. And I can feel it moving as we speak. So that is a nice feature of this one. This one does have the trailering package, so you get your trailer brake control right over here, and then your screen brightness control right there. Get your uh, window or your light controls here on the left stock and your wiper controls on the right stock. And while we are still here in the dark, taking advantage of all the lighting and the ambient lighting, I did want to show you the last of the screens up front here, and that is the uh, infotainment screen. Again, it's an OLED screen, so that is very dark blacks. It is an irregular shape, which only really comes into play when you use Apple CarPlay. You can see it does not fill up the entire screen. It's kind of diminishing the overall appeal of this large screen because you can very clearly see it's not utilizing everything. But all the other built-in screens do utilize everything, including your rear climate controls, everything right there. Very easy to navigate here or you can use this wheel right here and the volume knob right here. So this feels very Mazda-like to me and I like it. Uh, it does not work quite as well as the Mazda unit because I will say using Apple CarPlay uh, with a Mazda, any of these shortcut buttons that you see here, it would actually take you like to the navigation on Apple CarPlay. Whereas if you push it here, it takes you to built-in navigation and same with the audio, it takes you to the built-in audio. In a Mazda, it takes you to the Apple CarPlay version of it while you're plugged in. So just a little something to note there, but you can see um, I can control everything from CarPlay with touch, or I can use the wheel here and it uh, works just like many other click wheels. And the whole thing is a button. Can hit the home button here or the back button here and it takes you to all of your different modes. You can swipe through a bunch of different things. This does have Alexa built in, Spotify built in. Uh, so a lot of things that we can't necessarily take advantage of in our week with this because again, this is a press vehicle provided to us from Cadillac. Down below, you get your controls for your climate controls. This is not an OLED screen, but it still does a very nice job. You can see I've got everything in auto. And if you wanted to actually control uh, those rear climate controls, uh, that is done from up here. Uh, you just go to rear climate and then you can control the rear climate up there. I'm actually going to drive out from this dark parking garage so I can continue showing you the features in here that maybe don't need 
a completely dark environment to show off. All right, we have moved outside now and we have much better visibility to some of the details in here and the overall design. So very clean, sleek design. I would say it's one of General Motors' best. I still say the C8 Corvette is the overall best interior General Motors has done, but this ranks right up there with it. You get your wood accents, your leather accents, and on higher trims, everything is actually wrapped in real leather and a suede headliner. This one being the step up from basically the base model. We don't get all of that in this one, but it is still a very nice interior nonetheless. Underneath this panel here, you get two cup holders, storage cubby, USB-A and USB-C up here. And then perhaps my favorite implementation of uh, a cheap wireless charger in a vehicle. It's a nice snug fit. It's vertical, so it does not take up a lot of space fits my iPhone 14 Pro Max just perfectly and it charges it very well. Uh, because it is such a snug fit, it actually does charge it instead of just basically maintaining a charge. So I really like that. I will note that when you slide your phone in to charge it, it will display a message here on the screen letting you know that that is in fact for charging and not for keys and other metallic items. So just to know to keep that clear and clean uh, as you are driving. Which brings me to another point of this screen here. So while it is touchscreen, while it does control a lot of what's going on in the vehicle, if you turn the volume up, this auto volume um, kind of takes away the touch functionality so I can't change the temperature back here and this stays up here for quite a while and since I'm touching the screen it's staying up even longer so not a perfect implementation of touchscreen interface here uh, just something to note if you're getting into an Escalade very large center console here it is lined with felt and it does have this removable piece here you can see we do have bluetooth wireless headsets they are charging via the usb-c cable that was provided we will talk more about that when we get back to the back but i also wanted to note the additional storage down here on either side of the center console the passenger side actually does have a cigarette style lighter uh, power outlet up front so that uh, the passenger has more opportunities to charge things up over there. I will take a look at the passenger seat. You can see these are very nice leather uh, clad seats. They are very comfortable. They are heated. They are ventilated. We mentioned that earlier, but my tester has the AKG 36 speaker stereo system. So you can see two of the speakers are in the headrest. There's another one up there. They are absolutely everywhere in this vehicle, down in the doors, across the front up here. There are two subwoofers in this vehicle, three different amps. So this is a very uh, comprehensive audio system in this Cadillac Escalade. Some of the last things I will show you while I'm up front here. Not only do we have 38 inches of screen up here, but we have a screen in the rear view mirror in that it is a rear view camera. This is rather small for such a large vehicle. It's kind of interesting how small Cadillac went with this because, well, it does the job of being able to see through the back window. And I guess that's all you really need. And then we actually do have, if you can see it right now, a head up display. It is a color head up display. Not a lot of information, just your posted speed, current speed, and uh, your cruise control information up there. We do have some additional buttons up here. Your home link controls, um, the interior lighting button. You can power fold the third row seats from up here so that is a nice touch if you're loading up in the back this does have a programmable rear hatch so you can make sure and it does that it doesn't open too wide or too much and then you can see we've got controls here for the massive panoramic roof in this one this is the first implementation of a panoramic roof uh, in the Escalade, so a very welcome touch uh, to keep up with the competitors that are becoming more and more numerous. It used to just be the Lincoln Navigator, but now we've got Wagoneer in the mix with the Grand Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer L. So uh, 
Uh, that's just the domestic competition. But let's take a moment now and move to the second row of seats. Moving now to the second row of seats, you can see still power deployable running boards and the flip and fold second row seats are mainly folded back up. But when you fold them back into place and hop in, it is a very comfortable place to spend time. I've got an abundance of leg room back here. There is a mat pocket on both sides here. Lock and unlock button back here. Uh, my window switch right there. I do have a grab handle for climbing back here, but interestingly enough, no rear sunshades back here. I do have LED lights, my vents here in the ceiling, and more speakers. And while we're talking of infotainment, I do have rear seat inf infotainment package on this one. You can see we've got three built-in apps, two HDMI inputs, so you can have two things plugged in via HDMI and watch different things on each screen back here, or both watch the same thing. And because this has built-in Wi-Fi, I could bring something like a Apple TV and plug it back here and stream everything from Disney Plus to um, I mean, YouTube and Hulu are built into this, but I can stream pretty much anything back here in this um, model. And then you can get into settings here and adjust the brightness and a bunch of different things there, connect to Bluetooth. But I generally run with these off. Tucker has really enjoyed them. You can see I do get my own climate controls back here and three mode heated rear seats. Uh, but no ventilated rear seats. So heated seats are standard on the out outboard seats. I do have the bucket seats, but you can get a bench. Do have a couple cup holders that pop out down here. And then you can see USB-C and HDMI, as well as a household style plug for, like I said, if you brought something like an Apple TV to plug in back here. I showed you that this does have a sliding function. So even sitting behind myself at 510, I can slide this seat all the way forward and still have plenty of room. And then we've got an armrest right here that goes up and down. But I'm actually gonna show you just how much headroom I have. Even with the sunroof, I'm 510 and I've got more than enough headroom back here. And then I can recline a fairly good amount and get very comfortable back here. I've got a great view out that panoramic roof. This really is a comfortable vehicle, which speaks to one of the two major reasons why the Escalade has dodged uh, Cadillac's naming structure is because the Escalade uh, has not only become very popular in music and pop culture, uh, over the years, but it has also been a very popular uh, chauffeur vehicle and upscale limousine, basically, for many ride-sharing platforms and the like. And the Escalade has really become known as a premium uh, experience. And so this is the only vehicle that has escaped the letters and numbers naming structure that Cadillac has tried over well, the past two decades. So a very popular vehicle and has withstood some things from Cadillac here lately. But we've talked about front row, we've talked about second row, but let's talk about the third row. So there are actual multiple ways in which to fold these seats down. You can see there's a button right here and that folds it down one time. I can also pull the lever and it will do the same thing. Pull it again and it flips and folds forward. There's plenty of room here to climb in and get into this three across rear seat. And let me go ahead and fold the headrests up. So plenty of headroom back here again at 510. I mentioned earlier, this now has an independent rear suspension and increased space back here in the third row. This is the roomiest third row the Cadillac Escalade has ever had in standard wheelbase. The ESV version gets even more. And because of that independent rear suspension, my knees are not up in my chin right now. They're actually at a normal sitting height. And since this seat folds completely flat, it's actually very comfortable in spite of that. So you can see very comfortable right here. I would say three across adults might be a little tight, but it could be done. Three across kids should be no problem. We'll say uh, all three seats back here do have top tethers for child seats. So you could put child seats back here, but you're gonna be using 
the uh, seat belt method down low because there are no lower tethers in this version. And um, you could put three across back here very easily, but I'm actually gonna move over here to the side. This seat is all the way back right now, and you can see I've still got plenty of room, plenty of room. It is a very comfortable vehicle for seven people. You can fit seven adults back here without any problem. And I, I'm just impressed with the comfort back here in the third row. And just to show you that you are not a second class citizen, you do get USB-C back here. You get a cup holder, a little bit of storage, slightly padded uh, elbow rest right here. And then you can see the button to flip and fold the seat forward. Unfortunately, we cannot fo flip and fold this seat forward because Tucker's car seat is in place. If you wanna see what it is like for my family and what it is like to install a child seat in this, be sure and subscribe because our family review will be dropping on Thursday of this week. But uh, yes, no child seat friendly seats in the second row of this one. If you want uh, to use these seats quite regularly, I would be putting the child seat back here in the very back. But that's enough talking about the space in here. Why don't we hop back behind the wheel and see how this thing drives. So getting buckled up and ready to go in the Cadillac Escalade, there are a few features now that I'm parked that I did want to tell you about in this infotainment system. And that is the uh, parking mode, automatic parking assist. So this won't only help you park parallel or uh, perpendicular in a parking spot, but it'll actually help you unpark as well. I'm in a big empty parking lot right now, so this won't exactly work because it's looking for other cars. But what I did want to call out is the fact that this does have 360 cameras all the way around, but the camera button is kind of hidden in the menu here and you have to go and hunt for it. But when you do, you get your bird's eye 360 over here, your uh, full front image right here. You can do a wide image, an overhead image that shows the front of the vehicle, side image that shows both of the front wheels and tires. And I can look out the rear all the same. And then I can do basically a 360 in this. So you can't just swipe around the vehicle. You can select different predetermined angles uh, in your Cadillac Escalade. And I'm not driving a black one, so that isn't exactly like mine, but a pretty good camera system in this all the way around. And then this has trailering, so you can see your trailer hitch and all that information right there. So very good cameras in this one and i like how they're actually labeled with words so you know exactly what it is that you're seeing we do get an electronically actuated shifter here so grab the button on the side pull back to drive Seatbelt puts a check on me to make sure it is tight and in place and off we go I mentioned this has that rather thirsty 6.2 liter v8 that I tested in the Chevy Silverado ZR2. And I already showed you the fuel economy I was getting, just under 14 mpg and nearly 200 miles of driving this one. So it definitely comes at a cost to have such a big vehicle with such good power and responsiveness. This thing paired with this 10 speed has not left me wanting anything. It is a good, uh, engine and transmission combination. I really like the four-wheel drive system in this one. On a rainy day like today, there is an auto mode in addition to two high and four high. Again, this particular one does not have a four low, but again, probably not gonna be taking your Escalade with your 22 inch wheels off road very often. So really no need for a four low in this one, unless you're regularly in situations where you would need it. So I mentioned earlier the Navigator from Lincoln being the chief rival to this, but now Wagoneer has gotten into the mix with their Grand Wagoneer, and we've tested a couple. The Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer's interior is really bringing their A game with their different open pour wood options, and has a strong arrival factor to this Escalade 
Granted, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but Wagoneer is definitely bringing their game, and Lincoln has upped their game recently as well. So Cadillac has really started to watch their back as of late, because the competition is getting quite a bit more fierce, and they are not the only vehicle in the game right now. I did mention you can get a diesel in this version as well, giving you two engine options outside of the crazy performance V model, which really does give you a third one. Uh, but that goes up against the twin turbo V6 options from Lincoln and the new twin turbo inline six hurricane engine that is replacing the Hemi in the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer and both L versions of those as well. So there are a lot of options in this class, but I myself really like a V8, and the Escalade is about the last player in the market to offer you a good big American V8 in the segment. I did drop Tucker off earlier today at Zoo School and had him in the pickup line. The maneuverability of this vehicle, as large as it is, this is the biggest regular wheelbase Escalade that Cadillac has ever made, and it is super nimble and maneuverable. The steering in this is very light, but at a variable speed, it's not light when you're out driving around at high speed. It's light when you're driving around parking lots or school drop-off lines. It does a very good job of not really feeling so big and heavy, and it is very easy to find a parking spot, and when you do, just let the Cadillac park itself. Getting out on the road, you can see I'm on Holly and I's normal test loop, and this thing rides very well, thanks to that independent rear suspension. A first for this generation Escalade does a lot to remove the truckiness of how this thing drives, and with the adaptive air ride suspension, again, does a lot to remove the truckiness. When you hit bumps and things like that, you do still get a little bit of that jitter because it is still a body on frame vehicle, but it does a lot to just smooth out everything. At $108,000, this premium luxury is again, starting life at around $90,000 for this trim, but this one has been optioned up to 108 dollars as near as makes no difference. This one is quite well loaded. I already showed you some of the technological wizardry up front with the uh, night vision and the augmented reality. This is all around a very good vehicle, and I truly appreciate Cadillac bringing it to us to test for you and to show you exactly what a premium experience from Cadillac looks like. If you want to see more from us, what we're driving before it is uploaded here, be sure, you know, hit all the buttons down below. Subscribe, follow, ring the bell, all those things. And you can find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube. Everything is at GT Garage Talk. And like I said, I will be reviewing this with my wife and a son very soon. So be sure to stick around to see how they like this vehicle as well. But until next time, gearheads, bye. A little message appears up here. Wait for it. It's not going to do it now because I had just plugged it in.